What's up, G-Show Land, and welcome to our final installment of our Comic-Con coverage. Well, maybe not that final, but it's final, like, for right now. We're going to talk about the Shazam and Aquaman trailers that Warner Brothers just dropped. I mean, holy smokes. So we've got, we had the Godzilla trailer. We, we did a whole video on that, and it's really incoherent ramblings of Mad Men. So please, pardon that, but it's going up anyway. This one might be a little bit more tight and, and to the point when well, we're going to start off. Oh, man, I can't. I, hoo, hoo, hoo. There's some things I want to talk about because good God almighty. It's, it's me. It's G95. It's G73. I don't think G73 seen the trailers, but he's here anyway. He's here because that's the G show. And we're here and we're the rock and roll. So let's start with that Shazam trailer. Matt, holy crap, brother. What was your <laughs> initial thoughts when you saw that trailer? What did you think? Um, I was amazed by how funny it is. It it looks like it has like heart and just this just this I don't know childlike sense of humor that like comes through really well. It's not awkwardly forced in. It doesn't. It's seemingly awkward, not awkwardly forced in like um, Suicide Squad or Justice League was. This just feels natural. The flow feels good and like it's a breath of fresh air. I agree with that one hundred percent. Actually, holy smokes, that's a very good take on the trailer it does just go natural flow naturally um i i swear i if i didn't know better i i think this was a uh baby driver director that i'm gonna kick myself right now right i I swear to god i think it was a negger right film it felt like for me when i was watching this trailer it felt a little bit like scott pilgrim saves the world but that fun flavor from that movie you know the the, the, there's a fun flavor from that movie that This trailer really kind of uh, brought out because I agree with you, man. It's this this childlike wonder of becoming. A, there's some funny sequences in that trailer, and it's just <laughs> bless you, and it's just really well done. I, I, honestly, I'm man, I'm I'm excited. That's a wow, oof. For sure, for sure. Chase, you didn't get to see any of these trailers, right? He did not because he was making Godzilla gifts for the world to enjoy from that new Godzilla trailer that just dropped also right before the Shazam stuff went on. Um, A little disappointed. Well, I can't say I'm a little disappointed. There's still a ton of shooting to go, but we didn't get nothing from Wonder Woman. They showed a little footage there, but it's just Comic-Con exclusive stuff. Uh, I can't imagine. I mean, this movie was just announced like a month ago. I can't possibly imagine them showing footage um and or even let alone releasing a teaser trailer right right i mean come on man they they show her flying around in the invisible invisible jet man they they you could have just done that i'd have been happy wonder woman 84 invisible jet i'm down but i i'm not that mad because honestly i think the shazam trailer really it blew my mind and i didn't think it was going to i didn't think it was going to be what we got i enjoyed it like i really did enjoy it when (laughs) <laughs> he did, it, that part reminded me of Spider-Man when they're doing his what his powers are. Um, this the first one was like super strong, uh, and then the next one was like flight, and then he jumps up and he, like off the the uh, the skateboard ramp he goes up and he gets he gets up there he gets up there and then he falls back down. I thought that was great. Um, the charging of the cell phones that was funny. You're welcome. You're charged. Oh, that was so funny. It's just. Yeah, what do you... And I think this dude, Zach Levi, is like the... What in the world was that? Okay. Freaky. Um, Zach Levi... Was Chase. Chase, you there? I think we might be muted, but... Yeah, yeah. He's, he didn't mute himself. <laughs> well, we love you, Chase. You're a psychopath. Um, Where was I? Zach Levi, I like... He just... He, it's He's... He seems perfect for this role. That that childlike uh, amusement and amazement coming from him, where you know, as a, as a superhero, I don't know, man. I just I dug the trailer a lot. Like I couldn't believe it was that good, man. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> um, I was thinking this one is probably going to be one of the worst. DC movies yet, and now I'm like actually looking forward to it. 
And what I liked about the trailer too is that they didn't shy away. This this trail this movie takes place in that Justice League universe. Mm-hmm. Get away from all that dark, nasty shit and, and the, the things you might not like about those, you know, Batman v Superman and Justice League movies. This movie is in that universe and it is nothing right, like so those. So I saw Skyscraper last night. That is totally not what we're talking about, Chase. <laughs> oh my goodness. G73, ladies and gentlemen, he's gone crazy. Um, We're talking about the Shazam trailer right now and we were talking about the Aquaman trailer. But uh, did you get a chance to see any of those trailers, Chase? And I think he muted himself again. Anyhow, yeah, I don't know if he was actually talking to us. Probably not, which is funny, though. Regardless, makes a good comedy. Like that trailer, Shazam, it's funny, segways. Uh, yeah, the Aquaman shirt the kid had on in the beginning, I thought it was funny. Um, seeing the Batarang was funny when he said, like, what kind of superhero would you be? Or what kind mm-hmm. of superpowers you would have? Uh, Superman in the newspapers. There's word going around that Henry Cavill might pop up and appear in this movie. I'm not oh, sure. I, I would love it. I'm not sure. I think the Warner Brothers panel is finished. I'm going to actually check that because you know what? They would have showed Aquaman and if anything would have happened afterwards, I would, because I was hoping for maybe Henry Cavill. No, that's it. I mean, I, I feel like that's something they're really not going to leak, especially at Comic-Con. On the first trailer, you're going to be like, hey, uh, Henry Cavill's in this, but we're not going to show him. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to do that. Right. So if he is, it's going to be just a nice little pleasant surprise Easter egg. Right, I agree. I agree. I was hoping for maybe Henry Cavill popping up, not in the, for Shazam, but just popping up and saying, yo, Man of Steel 2, coming soon. I'd have been like, yeah, let's do it. But maybe he's on a worldwide press tour right now for uh, Mission Impossible. Who knows? Yeah. There's been a shocking... Um, shockingly few announcements for new new movies. Yeah, serious. That, which is like, you know, to come to think of like two Comic Cons ago or last Comic Con even, or you know, DC was like, hey, here's all these like 19 movies we have in the works right now. Prepare for the next like 10 years, and obviously, I think all of them have fallen through. But <laughs> and here's uh, out three that's coming out. <laughs> there's 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 no announcements for new anything right yeah absolutely right so we we didn't see anything for flash um nothing for the batman nothing for the joker that was announced with joaquin phoenix which that's a whole nother podcast we got to talk about um yeah. so yeah i guess maybe warner brothers in dc they learned their lesson from you know basically shooting themselves in the foot uh, just make everything nice and tight. I, this this Shazam trailer was definitely a step in the right direction as far as tone goes, especially considering it's still a part of that universe. Wonder Woman mm. is a part of that universe too, but Wonder Woman took place way before the events of Justice League or Man of Steel. So that lighthearted nature that it brought worked because we weren't in the dark and depressing days yet. So that yeah. worked. This is the dark and depressing days, yet... This is like a breath of fresh air. It literally was. I, I completely enjoyed it. Didn't realize how much I was going to enjoy it. Like you, I thought it was going to be, you know, eh. But no, I, I was I was absolutely turned on. It, let me ask you real quick before we jump to the next trailer. What did you think of the costume? Because I thought that shit actually looked great. Um, In the still images and the, uh, you know, leaked set photos, I was like, eh, I don't know. It looks too cartoony. I mean, it, it looks straight out of the comics, but yeah. given the tone, it works. It sure does, man. I'm, I, I'm not, I've never been a fan of Shazam's design or his look, but it, so I won't say that I, I like it, but it works for given the context. Absolutely, absolutely. His fingers crossed, Superman pops up in that movie somewhere as a Someone who's going to lend him a helping hand to guide him to use his strength. And another fingers crossed for hopefully, possibly, pretty please, a stinger ending with Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Black Adam. I would lose my shit. And I think everybody else would. Okay? And possibly a hint to the Marvel family. I actually like Freddy and Mary Marvel. All the, you know, Captain Marvels. Captain Marvel. I can't, they can't even do it. They can't even do it. 
They would have to call him the Shazam family or something. She wouldn't be Mary Marvel. Wow, forget it. I'm going deep in there. We're going to get out of that and just go by what we saw. The trailer was cool. Matt liked it. I so, dug okay. it. Before we move on to the next thing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think his name is like Shimon Hansu. Yes. He's playing, yeah, he, he's playing Shazam. The wizard. Like the deity Shazam. Yep. Uh, which is ironic because obviously you and I know, but you know maybe not everybody who's listening knows uh, Shazam's other name is Captain Marvel. Right? Oh, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> so, and Captain Marvel comes out next year as well, the Marvel movie with Brie Larson, and where Ronan the Accuser and Jaimon Hansu's character's name from Guardians of the Galaxy, who I don't remember, uh, he's in that as well. So he's like, we get like a double dose of Jaimon Hansu and Captain Marvel next year. That's true. Or Shazam, Captain Marvel. He's... Uh... I like Dare I dare I do a bad pun? I'm gonna do it anyway. Next year is going to be a marvelous year for him. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. shut the podcast down. Get rid of this guy. It's over. <laughs> I can't help it. I like corny jokes. Um good point. Aquaman. What the f uh, okay. I'm gonna start this one off because I've been an Aquaman fan for as long as I can remember. And yes, that's going back to Super Friends. That's where I loved Aquaman. I used to jump in the water and go swimming in my uncle's pool and, and always think I was Aquaman because Aquaman does that and I always loved it. And the talking to fish stuff, man. But in my young brain, I could talk to Godzilla. If he could talk to fish, if fish live underwater, so does Godzilla. So in my brain, I would talk to Godzilla, right? That's how I used to do it. Never in a million years would I thought that they were going to make an Aquaman movie and then, you know, we get... The Batman versus Superman, and then we get the image of Jason Momoa. No, we get Jason Momoa first off, uh, cast as Aquaman, and I'm like, wow, I can totally see that. Then we get the first image of him, you know, before Batman v Superman comes out. And I'm like, holy shit, are you kidding me? That's perfect. Then we get Justice League, and you know what? He's one of my favorite parts of Justice League. I, I, I like the Surfer Aquaman dude character. I wasn't prepared for this trailer, though. I'll tell you right now, and I did some things I. Like, that I really fucking like, because overall, I really love this trailer. But then there's some things that I'm like, huh, I seen this movie earlier this year. And it was called Black Panther. But, what did you think of this trailer? Um, I can agree with all that. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, I trust James Wan to do a good job, because I haven't seen his entire filmography, but everything I have seen, I've really enjoyed, except for Conjuring 2. I thought that was kind of a little lame. You watch um, your mouth. You watch your mouth! The first one's better. <laughs> that, that's a good cool um, scary, bro. But, yeah, I, I trust him to do a good job because he's a very competent filmmaker, and he throws his heart into everything he does. And um, it has an amazing cast. Yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't show any Willem Dafoe in it, because... You're right. Holy shit. It's Orem. Uh, but Black Manta looks fucking amazing. Dude, one of my favorite villains of all time, and he nailed it. Oh, my he looks, God. He looks so good. Uh, Amber Heard looks gorgeous, as always. A very good joke and, at the end there. Redheads. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, and I'm really hoping for uh, some fish fuck stuff that we didn't get in Shape of Water. Dude, come on. <laughs> We got it in the shape of water. They just didn't show it. I just wanted to see it. What okay, are you just, talking about? I just wanted to see it. Oh, my God. That is insane. Dude, uh, the things I really like, you nailed Black Manta. I, I love Black Manta. Oh, again, going back to Super Friends, that design was always cool because it reminded me. It was like, oh, shit, look, it's Spaceship Head when I was a kid, you know? Um, but I always loved that look. I, I always loved that crazy giant manta ray head a black helmet with giant red eyes it was cool well, they, they also did the laser eyes too yes! which is something i wouldn't expect right and it, i dude it fucking i was like really they they, they went straight comic book and yeah. i applaud that i so applaud that because this also even though it fits into the dc eu or whatever they call it the justice league universe the batman v superman universe this also did not feel that dark it, it had, like, its own tone with it. And, you know, I was always 
on the side of DC. I always said, yeah, you know what? Maybe don't do the Marvel thing. Don't do all of these um, solo movies first that leads into a Justice League. Turn turn it on its head. If you've got the right story and the right pieces, you can do this. And Well, that was the original plan with Justice League Mortal way back in the day when uh, George Miller was working on it. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Make a good movie and then branch the characters off. You already know who Superman and Batman is. We have, you know, 12 movies amongst each other. So you're good in that regard. Um, but then you see how everything turns out. And you see the backlash and like, oh, what is this and that? And it's too dark. And then Justice League comes out. It's like, oh, it's, they're trying to make it campy. What the hell's going on? And all that, all of that criticism aside, you take Wonder Woman and Man of Steel, I, I always I love Man of Steel. I love Man of Steel. I don't like Batman v Superman. But you take Wonder Woman, you take Man of Steel, and on their own, they're really good fucking movies. Now you're looking at, um, you know I like Suicide Squad, but I don't put that in the same category, no in there, any of these, right? Um, but now you look at the Shazam trailer, and you look at this Aquaman trailer, and you see totally it's completely different. And now I'm coming around to that thing where I'm like, maybe they should have went this route first. Maybe they should have. But would that have affected everything? Because if they still wanted to make a dark movie later on, you know, how, do, how does that affect the characters? Because, again, we've seen Wonder Woman and Batman v Superman. It's completely different Wonder Woman in her solo movie. And then that carried over into Justice League, which she works. Aquaman worked in Justice League. It seems like it's working in this solo movie. There is so much good stuff in that trailer, man. Okay. Well, it's not about aping the Marvel formula and making everything lighthearted and fun. It's about... Um, wait, are you, you still there? Oh, I'm still here. Yeah, listen, I'm listening. Okay, Chase dropped out, I think. Yeah, he did. Um, it's, it's about getting the tone of the movie right for the story and the characters. So, like... For example, I don't think the tone of Ragnarok fits the story. Right. You know, it's supposed to be about the end of the fucking planet. Exactly. And it's like, oh, you know, Valkyrie drunkenly falling off her spaceship. Ah, oh, so funny. So funny. Um, but, you know, it's it's about getting the tone right. And I, I think that's where... Um, DC is really trying their best to find that balance right now. Um, like I think Wonder Woman had the the balance perfect. You know, it had some some lighthearted moments and some good humor, but by far and large, it was a tragic war story. You know, it was a very you know pretty harsh depiction of of war too. You see the amputees and you see the human suffering, and it was like shit. Okay, this is a little jarring. And then you get, you know, a movie like Suicide Squad or Justice League where the tone is all over the fucking place right. due to so much studio meddling. And I'm really hoping they don't, from now on, don't just try to that chase that Marvel theme of let's make everything lighthearted and fun uh, where they should be trying to chase the, the tone of let's make it fit for, the, like, so, you know, Shazam that lighthearted tone works. Um, Aquaman, they could play around with that, that borderline a little bit more, make it kind of fun, make it a fun action movie, but also have some, some good, you know, more serious moments. So it was not more mature or darker necessarily, but more serious and maybe somber. I don't know. Um, but you know, like a Batman movie, shouldn't in this universe shouldn't be fun. You right. know, we shouldn't be laughing at Batman's expense. Fuck Batman. A la, a la Justice League. Oh, I'm I'm bleeding or whatever the fuck he said. Yeah, he was like he's like, do you bleed? Yep, I'm bleeding. Yep, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that was, uh, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. That was so Josh Whedon. That was. Um so yeah, I, I think we should really be they should really be trying to chase that tone. Um, cause you could have a franchise where it flip flops from movie to movie, which is what Mar Marvel is starting to get into and they're pulling it off really fucking well. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I shit, <laughs> you got me because I agree with everything you just said. Um, Jason Momoa for me is is perfectly cast as Aquaman. I think, I hope, I honestly hope this movie pulls in enough bank to warrant more movies with this man in the DCU. Mm-hmm. I really because I I do I. I you know, it's one of those things. I got a man crush on the dude. Like, oh, that, that's that, I got a bromance. Like, not a bromance because I don't know him. But I'm like, yo, if I knew that dude, it'd be a bromance. I'm like, what's up, my dude? Um, and and it, like with this trailer, and James Bond, you're conjuring two hate aside. Uh, I don't hate it. I just it's not as good as the first. It's so scary. That nun is freaky, man. I I seen the nun trailer the other day, real quick, because we talking trailers. I saw the nun trailer the other day, and when you think this is coming this way, it comes that way. And you know what? It scared me. I jumped. I said, "Oh, motherfucking Jesus Christ!" Oh, no, no, Jesus, fuck me up. But um, the Aquaman stuff. Dude, this is what this is what I want to bring up. There was a big thing a big that people were making a big thing out of this and honestly i was like yeah how are they gonna do this is a big 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 thing and this trailer answered it in spades and that was talking underwater yeah (laughs) yeah i was worried about that too just do it right like so if if you ever read a comic book aquaman talks underwater with his atlantean fellows or whoever else he's all right and yeah it's just natural there's no air bubbles there's no Pocket bubbles like uh, yeah, yeah. Joss Whedon did. They they made such a point to make such the they lingered on the awkward bubble for so fucking long, and it was just such a random throwaway scene. You know, it wasn't mere like oh your mom's mad at you or whatever the fuck it was. Right. It was it was pointless, and it was just awkward because you know they they swim together and then just air bubble. And then they're, like, dry on the inside of the bubble. Yeah. And then just, it's done. And, like, they, Aquaman goes on his merry way to help stop parademons or whatever the fuck. And he went, I think, at, at that point, he went and helped him on the, in Gotham Harbor. Um, yeah. That was still dope. I don't care what nobody says. I like Justice League. I don't care. I like Justice League. I do. I do. I hate Batman Superman, but I like Justice League. Um, but the, the talking underwater, it just worked. Like... Like, yeah, I sat there, I watched it, and it happened. And I like, you know, when the Grinch smiles in in, in how the Grinch stole Christmas, that mm-hmm. that's the smile. Like it just creeps up on my face, and then next thing you know, my cheeks are touching my eyebrows because I'm smiling so wide. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. I I loved it. I was like, yeah, why the fuck not? Perfect. I absolutely love that they were talking underwater. And then there's this one shot. And this is where I bring up the uh, Black Panther comparison, because when his brother's actually Orm, if I'm not mistaken, when when they're fighting for the throne of Atlantis, that that reminded me so much of when T'Challa was, yeah, I'm the king of Wakanda, and mm-hmm. you know that movie is dope. I don't, you know don't bastardize certain aspects of that movie, but if they do it right. And well, let's not act like the story in Black Panther is so original. No, I get that. I've never get been that. done before. No, I get it 100%. But as far as, you know, this generation, right? Our generation and the movie going public, you can't, you know for a fact that those comparisons are going to come fast and furious. Oof, I hate using that, but. Oh. You know why there? Oh, yeah. shit, James. Um. But you know it's gonna come. It's gonna come because that's what it is. Like, that's what we've seen recently, and something that has stuck out, and something that has succeeded in recent memory. And I, we had that discussion when we did the Black Panther review. I loved, loved, love, love every time, the two times T'Challa had to fight for the throne. I loved the way it was set up. I, it was just beautiful. And then I see that in this, and it's underwater, obviously, and it's in an arena, which is kooky. Um, but it's like, you can't help but compare the two. It's like, oh, I've seen that before. I, I know it is. I've seen this. Um, I'm not mad at it because we haven't seen the movie yet. But I was just like, oh, I don't know, man. Something else, something else. But I will say this. I will say this. Again, Black Manta, unfucking believable The fucking mm-hmm. eye beams, you got to be kidding me. Oh, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. 
the top. think it'll end with uh, Lex Luthor trying to recruit Black Manta too, or do you think they're just gonna drop that whole thing? Man, why you gotta do that to me, man? Why do you, why why would you do why would you do that to me? Because I still love that end scene of Justice League. I want Joe Magniello to be Deathstroke. And unfortunately, he's not going to be able to fight Ben Affleck's Batman. But I wanted him to fight Ben Affleck's Batman. He might. We don't, we don't know for sure. We don't know what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, you're right. But you know what? I'm, 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 I'm hedging my bets on it's not going to happen. Right? I'm hedging my bets on that. Uh, but as far as Luthor... Coming to recruit Black, Black Manta at the end of Aquaman? Yes, please. Thank you. Are you kidding me? Make, it a, make the Legion of Doom? You, got, you gotta be kidding me. Making the Legion of Doom. I mean, think about it. Because in Justice League, I don't care what anybody says. That's the Hall of Justice. That is the Hall, the Hall of Justice is in Justice League. It's there. They just don't call it the Hall of Justice. But when Superman is resurrected and he fights the Justice League... Look at that thing. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, that's all I want, right? That's all I want. If Lex Luthor comes and recruits Black Man, I, I go crazy. But that's, you know, that's that's the geek in me geeking out. And the, the, the speculation mode that you know I love getting into. But we're not going to, we're just breaking this. We'll find out in a very brief five months. Dude, holy shit, you're absolutely, you know what's crazy? The fa- you are absolutely that movie does come out in five months, and this is the first legit trailer we've gotten for it. I think they showed footage of it last year at Comic Con, but we didn't get to see that. That was exclusive to Hall H. But you're absolutely right when you think about it. And then you got things like Godzilla that comes out next year, and we get full trailers for it now. You know, Shazam, same thing next year, full trailers. Wow, that's crazy. That- well, I think part of it is they're. They kind of knew they shot themselves in the foot because, you know, we got Justice League footage over a year before, like a year and a half before the movie came out. You yeah. know, we got Batman v Superman stuff over a year before the actual movie come out came out. You know, I think they're trying to pace themselves a little bit and maybe in the wake of all of the shit all the all the criticism and controversy they're trying to maybe like quietly approach the new movies yeah, yeah i can see maybe that. not not bombard us quite as hard with marketing so so far ahead of the movie's release yeah no i i totally you know i totally buy that i get that i get that i'm just saying man Warner brothers i think they did a good job with their panel, uh, we didn't review everything because, again, I they we don't they, care about everything. Exactly, they had Harry Potter start off everything. The the uh, you know, my wife loves Harry Potter, so she's gonna be mad at me. But I'll watch that trailer later with her. Um, then they did the Lego Movie two, but they didn't show any trailer for that. Like no new trailer dropped. So, um, and honestly, I don't really, I don't care. I I was reading a couple of things from it, and it seemed funny. Like <laughs> uh, Emmett. From the Lego movie, who is voiced by Chris Pratt. Apparently, he's a uh, dinosaur wrangler. <laughs> so that's funny. It, it, you know, because Jurassic World. But um, then what else they did? Uh, then Godzilla came, and we got that trailer. And we, again, it, sorry for the way, especially me. I'm, I'm all over the place in that, that review. I apologize. But we got that. And then the DC stuff kicked off. Kicked off with Wonder Woman, went to Shazam, and then. Aquaman, and I gotta be honest, man. I give props. They did. They did the goddamn thing. I'm a little upset at Marvel not being here this year, because I would have liked to see something from uh, um, Captain Marvel. It's wrapped. That movie wrapped about a week ago, so they definitely had footage to show. Uh, James Gunn did it. He was what filming for two, three weeks and put out a whole trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy. So. It can be done. I would have loved to see something from Infinity War 2, whatever they're going to call that, Avengers 4, because let's be for real here, that is the biggest movie of the freaking year, hands down. Nothing's going to touch that. Nothing. Um, But being that they're not here, 
Warner Brothers came in and they did what they had to do, in my honest opinion. That Shazam trailer really fucked me up. It turned me around like I did not see that coming. And then this Aquaman trailer, I... Like I said, the little bit of uh, Black Panther I seen in it doesn't diminish that I'm going to see this movie regardless. But then that that Black Manta and <laughs> the talking underwater just seamlessly. And Amber Heard is hot. So <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. I, I'm sorry to say, she's just a gorgeous woman. And again, I got a man crush on Jason Momoa. So whoo, kudos to him. Was she at the, the panel? She was. But she was wearing oh, she I had bet, uh, She had blonde yeah. hair. She really liked um, running into Johnny Depp at that same stage. That's why they. That's why they put that one first, and hers towards the end. Yeah, and they had to get him out of there. And he came out in full character, so I give him props for that. He came out as Grim Grimwald, or Gr- I don't know who the hell he's supposed to be playing. I think it's Grimwald, but he came out in full character in costume. I I dig that. I dig that. But um, you know, Comic Con's not over. There's still all of today. And there's still all of tomorrow, Sunday, and then it'll be a wrap. But yeah, um, it's uh, still what one o'clock? Yeah, over there? it's one That's o'clock right now. Exactly. So, but as far as everything we've seen so far, what is your favorite thing? Before we go, come on, Godzilla. <laughs> I swear to God, I didn't see that coming. I did not see that coming. But you know what? All right. I don't have a fucking Shazam tattoo. I got a Godzilla tattoo. I know. I, I swear. To, I, I thought you. About. I thought you were gonna say Clone Wars. I just swear to God, I thought you were gonna say Clone Wars. Well, you said today. I did. You're right. No, I said Comic Con. So far, that's what I said. Well, and Godzilla. Okay, I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you. Real quick, you know what? Let's do it real quick. Let's talk about that Godzilla trailer one more time. Let's do. Let's just do it one more time. All right. No ramblings of a madman. Let's just talk about it. That's how we're gonna end this, dude. Seriously. What the hell did we just see? Uh, destruction, madness, chaos, monsters. Were you happy with what you saw in the trailer as far as monsters go? Yeah, I was got a lot more than I was expecting to get. Sure, there were clouded in shadows, but we got solid looks at all of the the known monsters in this movie, right. and. I already see people like comments online of like, oh, I can already tell this is going to be a human driven story. Like, bitch, did you see that fucking trailer? There's monsters everywhere. There was, there was, a, there was more monster than human in this trailer. There was. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And the crazy thing is, we never seen any of the monsters uh, interact with one another, which mm-hmm. is what I liked very much because I was worried that we were going to see like an awesome fight scene. You know, a clip of something. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I guess I'm going to have to agree with you. I'm going to have to agree with you. But that Shazam trailer really caught me so off guard that I'm like, that's probably my close second. Yeah. As it's, much it's, as I want... Fun. Yeah, as much as I want Aquaman, that Shazam trailer, because I had zero interest in that. But that Shazam trailer caught me off guard that Godzilla trailer, though, my goodness, man. I mean, like you said, we got a glimpse of all three new creatures, but not, but you know, the Toho monsters. Godzilla was there front and center in a couple of shots. Very gorgeous shot. One of my favorite shots in that whole trailer was when you see them looking at Godzilla underwater, and he's like looking up, and his spines are glowing a bit, and his eyes glow just a bit, and he's looking right at them. I thought that was mm-hmm. great. It looks like when you look down at your pet, you know, your dog or your cat, whatever you love, and you look down at it, I love Godzilla, and that, oh, God, it was just a gorgeous shot. Very hard to see, of course, because, again, it's underwater. Um, happy to see Ken Watanabe back as Dr. Serizawa. It's funny because the entire trailer, he was in that suit that he was in in the very beginning of 2014's Godzilla. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I it... it it delivered. I th- I wanted more. It delivered less, but gave me exactly what I wanted. If you can make sense of that statement, like I am so satisfied with that trailer. I'm going. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna watch that trailer like 500 more times today. Uh, but Rodan, Mothra, King Ghidorah, you you got to be kidding me. They're all there, and they and they were front and center. 
The trailer didn't shy away. The movie, I think, is going to do a lot better than 2014 did. I don't know about that. Uh, because... I was going to say in regards to the fans. No, no. I, I, really? I'll, I mean, in regards to the fans, but it comes out two weeks before Infinity War. It's going to get crushed in two weeks. Wait, wait, no, wait. Whoa, whoa, what? I thought Infinity War was coming out in the beginning of May. Uh... Avengers 4, if I'm not mistaken, comes out at the top of May, and Godzilla comes out Memorial Day. Let me check. Because that's what I thought, honestly. I thought, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure Infinity War comes out in June. See, and that's, that's a big issue. And that's, so I had this conversation with G73 on the Godzilla block party a couple of weeks ago, where I was like, Godzilla should come out, honestly, in November, like Thanksgiving. Drop that with that. Okay, you're right. May 3rd. Okay. Woo! So, they we buy some time. We bought a lot of time. My thing, and this is what uh, sunk 2014, was it came out, and then a week later, X-Men Days of Futures Past came out. So, you have X-Men, which is a proven franchise. Even though I didn't like that movie, it made buku bucks, and it took away from Godzilla's box office. Uh so I don't know what comes out around that going forward, but a four-week lead-in to Godzilla for Avengers, I think it'll be enough to take the number one spot when it comes out, Godzilla 2. Yeah. And yeah. I think for fans, for the fans, I think it's going to be well-received. I think it's going to be better received than the first one. Because, again, the biggest complaint from the first one that I've heard, that I've heard is... Well, Godzilla wasn't in enough, and then when we got Godzilla, we got cock teased. I totally agree with y'all. I, mm. You know, I, I, I well, I mean, you know, I'm. That's not the reasons I don't really care for that movie much. You, but see, your reasons are ridiculous. You don't like what, Ford Brody. My reasons are that the story sucks. No way, Ford Brody was the best freaking antagonist, the uh, protagonist. Uh, and, 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 Ford Brody sucks. No way, he was the best protagonist of the year. What are you talking about? I love Ford, Ford, Ford Brody. Brody. Utter bullshit. Matter of fact, I am so mad at this Godzilla 2 trailer that Ford Brody wasn't in it that, you know what, Shazam? No, I'm, I'm lying. I'm lying. Okay, lying. so, God, okay, just let me get this little bit out. We won't get into a big spiel because it's a ra it's a fucking rabbit hole, but... <laughs> I love you, by the way. Godzilla 2014 feels like it was originally written to be another movie, another giant monster movie about the Mutos, Mutos, and... They're like, well, how do we sell this shit? Uh, to throw Godzilla in there. Mm, all right, well, because he's that's it. He's the MacGuffin. He's the that's that's straight up it. He's he, he doesn't really matter beforehand, and he only matters when the when the Mutos show up. And like, oh shit, there's this giant monster called Godzilla, and he used to fight these things. And thank God we have him to 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 stop the Mutos. And it was just like he was so he wasn't the focus of his own movie. He was just poorly written in to figure out how to stop the Mutos. Like, if you if you take Godzilla completely out of G14 and look at it just as a movie about the Mutos, like, just totally delete all of Godzilla's scenes, and, you know, like, okay, how did they landed at San Francisco. Like, how do we, how do we stop them? Uh, okay, let's drop them, nuke on them. we got to lure them out to the bay and then drop them, nuke on them. All right, problem solved. Movie's done. That's it. It works. It works as a movie. You could take Godzilla out of that entirely and rework the climax a little bit, and it works as a movie. You think the nuke would have stopped the Mudos? Probably. I, I don't think so. They Given, okay, you're looking at it through the lens of a Godzilla movie still. I'm talking no, just I'm straight, just just straight movie. No, I get you. I, I'm not though. I'm not. I'm looking at it through the lens. You take Godzilla out, and I'm I'm on board with you here, right? But the, the Mutos in the movie were set, they were eating radiation. They were eating it. They were eating atomic okay, so, bombs. So they figure out some other dumb MacGuffin thing. But my point is that <laughs> Godzilla is just a throwaway tool in his own movie, and I hated that. I know where you're coming from. I know, because in the beginning, I wanted to just Godzilla on a rampage, and that's not what we got. But what we got, and again, and I said this a million times, and this is why I love you, what we got was a throwback to the Showa era movies where Godzilla was a hero. Regardless of 
you know, his first appearance to men. It wasn't his first appearance to men because Monarch has been following him for God knows how long. We were trying to kill it. I mean, they even reiterate that. John Goodman says it in Kong Skull Island, which still, what the hell attacked his ship in Kong Skull Island? I don't think it was Godzilla. That's something that I'm very interested in. Um, it's probably the thing that uh, attacks the island in 54. It wasn't Godzilla. <laughs> No, that's 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 my point. That that monster he fought in 1954 in the comic. Oh, I forgot about that comic. That comic was actually lackluster to me. I didn't like yeah, kinda. that swarm thing. Um, but you know, regardless, in this trailer, they they set up exactly your point though. Godzilla is like the balance, or what is it? The not the infection. What they called it something. It was kind of cool. It was like. The Titans are something, and Godzilla is the king of the Titans. He's the king of the monsters, and I'm I'm extremely excited about what we're gonna get. Honestly, I really am. And one of my favorite things is that this trailer did not lead anything into Kong. It did not give you a hint about Kong. Nothing, and that's a great thing. That's a great thing. That's how you got to do it. You know it's coming, but you don't have to show your hand. Honestly, I hope this whole movie doesn't set up Kong at all. The end credits. Oh. There, there's the, you're going to get the stinger. You're going to get the stinger. Yeah, but I, I would... I would hope this is just like a fairly standalone movie. You know, maybe Ghidorah flies off into space or something and becomes like fucking Super Ghidorah or <laughs> Death Ghidorah or whatever. Mecha King um, Ghidorah. To come back for the third one. But, you know, Godzilla vs. Kong or or even Mechani- or um, Mecha King Ghidorah. That'd be pretty sick. <laughs> but uh, Let's introduce yeah, aliens. just don't set it up at all. Just be like, "Oh shit! Look, everybody, uh, King Kong, and Godzilla are fighting again." Surprise! Nah, I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you there. I'm just all right. So that'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty much the, the, the Comic Con footage. We've got a lot of stuff. It was fun. We again, I, I, I seriously can't get over how much I enjoyed that Shazam trailer. I'm gonna watch that back to back with Godzilla and back to back with Aquaman because oh. Laser beams from Black Manta's eyeballs, brother. Oh, and real quick, did you not see the freaking Mosasaurus that they rode in on at the end? Like, that, there was an epic battle yeah. in Aquaman. This might have been the thing that, like, I, I almost flipped. Oh, I did a backflip. I almost broke my neck because I can't even backflip. Um, th- There was, like, a war going on, and it looked, and I pray to everything. It's not like Justice League. Where I thought Justice League, when you see them all coming together to fight, I thought that was going to be the big end sequence. Like, everybody came together to fight, and the Justice League is over here fighting, whatever. No, that was a past sequence. It was three minutes. We got to see a Green Lantern. That was cool. But this, in Aquaman, you've seen these, you know, they're riding sharks. They're riding giant seahorses. And then a Mosasaurus comes into the view. And I'm like, holy shit, Jurassic Park. Here we go. That wasn't a crocodile or an alley. That was a... Freaking Mosasaurus, and I loved it, and I thought it was freaking great. So we're gonna get the Meg, you know, in a couple of weeks, and then in a couple of months we're gonna get the Meg versus a Mosasaurus. So, dude, it's it's like the Asylum is taking over the Warner Brothers, and we're we're getting big budget versions of those Asylum movies. I'm stoked. I know you are too, right? Mm-hmm. Ah, no. yeah. Next year, remember next year, Connoisseur. The four, the revenge. We're gonna get a new connoisseur. That's right. Oh man! All right. Anyway, let's wrap this up, let's, brother. Thank you for hanging out with me as long as you have hung out with me today. Of course, of course. And thank y'all for listening. I am G One. This is the G Show. This is our Warner Brothers panel conclusion. Comic Con's been fun, man. Comic Con's been fun. Go, go, Godzilla. Peace. <laughs>